Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you guys how to make a Yu-Gi-Oh! custom card or also known as an Orica using Master Duel renders. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what is an Orica? Well, like I said, it's a custom card that uses usually game assets for Master Duel to create kind of a fake card. In this case, I have a custom one here. Originally I was going to do this um, as a commission, but I also made Water Enchantress a couple months ago, and it looks almost the exact same as the regular physical card in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Um, so this is what it'll look like. Uh, when, when you're starting out, it probably is not going to look the exact same. You can overlay cards, so I took the actual Water Enchantress of the Temple card, a scan of it, and overlaid it just to try and get the text as close as possible to here. I'm going to have link, a link and multiple links in the description of all the assets you'll need, not including a photo editing software such as GIMP or Adobe Photoshop. Again, personally, I use Photoshop. It is the best tool out there, just objectively. No one else can be really using GIMP in a professional setting, uh, but you kind of have to. Uh, you have to use uh, Photoshop in this case, but so this is what it's going to look like in the end, uh, or close to it, depending on how well you're able to align text and everything. This is all just using Master Duel assets minus the Water Enchantress picture. I got that from a while ago before it was actually in the game. Now, however, since it's in the game, you can use the, the exact same things. Again, don't use these to actually sell, but this is just for you know, a fun thing to do. Eventually, once you do this, you could theoretically print these on a bunch of cards. This is how um, printers tend to work, at least in the US, this is how they're printed. Usually they'll be in vertical in vertical columns rather than horizontal. You guys will see these on un uncut sheets from YCS's, um, Nationals, for example. Uh, all of the cards are usually printed vertically and then printed together all at once, a bunch of secret rares together, a bunch of ultra rares together. That's just how printers work. They print them out just like this. If you guys have seen the custom tokens at YCS is in nationals, international events. You guys will see this is kind of a similar thing. They have a two by two grid of photocopy paper, um, and they use a it's like a two thousand dollar photocopy printer um, just to make those tokens. We'll show you guys on screen later what that looks like in person. But basically, all they're doing is putting these images together in columns. I don't know the exact. Um, amount of rows they have or columns they have per sheet, but I'm sure it varies depending on the order quantity. And then you literally just line them together. Then they cut them using specialty cut machines, uh, pretty standard in the printing industry. We're gonna get out of that there. So for this, so you'll need a couple things first. Obviously, like I said, you don't need your photo editing program. You're gonna have to use the Asset Studio GUI program to extract all the information. Um, all the data from Master Duel if you want to use those assets specifically. We have a tutorial on how to do that. You guys have seen that. Again, the link will be in the description. But you'll need to get those done first. So this is what it'll look like once you're done. I saved it to a, a specialty folder um, on one of my hard drives, which you guys see up here, back here. And then once you have everything downloaded, so you have Sprite Text Assets, Textures 2D. So this is going to have all the card images approximately. It's a couple months old. But obviously, the number one thing we actually need is from the font section. So these are all of the types. These are all the fonts you need for uh, for your custom cards, basically. This is what uh, Master Duel uses for each card, and it's scripted in a way with the Unity engine to put everything together properly. I'm going to take a look at Rodin. Um, I absolutely love this font. It's a very clean font to use. This is what it looks like. You literally just install these. So for example, you can go uh, highlight all of them, right click, install, uh, etc. You can do all of that. You use the exact same fonts for everything. Uh, this is for the, I think the like turn player, stuff like that. A lot of title fonts, that's what this would be used for. Um, and the Japanese card text, which this is very clean as well. And then the North American, this looks pretty good too. So this will be the exact font. I'm going to actually install it here. I already have it installed. I'm just going to reinstall it though. I've been having problems with it recently. Um, that's just for my own editing. So once you have all of that, you're going to want to find a certain card you want to make. Again, Water Enchantress. If we go through here, you can see like Share the Pain, MST, anything like that. We're going to go ahead and just pick one at random and then uh, go from there. What actually would look good? I'm not sure. Um, this is not going to have every single card. This has, I think, the story modes and the beginning cards. I have them saved to different things, and some alt arts too. Um, I have them saved to different thing. Sprites you guys can also see from here. 
Let me go ahead and find a card that we can make besides Water Enchantress and that custom card, and then we'll go from there. So in this case, I went through some of the old 5e's cards, and I have right here, you guys may not know, this is Max C. We're gonna go ahead and go back, right click, and then open with Photoshop in this case. This is what Max C's art is. It is just a bunch of insects in here, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and remake this card, this Max C. Um, entirely from scratch and show you guys exactly how I did it. Let's go ahead and take a look. So from the textures 2D folder, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down so you guys will see, the, again, these are the older versions uh, of the most recent assets. You guys can see there are card frame borders here. There are two kinds. So there's the regular kind that has the card art in it and then there's like the spark client kind. I'm not sure what this one's for. I don't, I don't play enough Master Duel anymore um, to really know but we're gonna select this card underscore frame zero one. Now this is the effect monster card frame. Right click, open in Photoshop. Here is exactly what we need. So from here, and if you always have this set up, you guys can basically do it in any ratio you want, but I always start off just using the exact ratios that they're using. Uh, we're gonna select the uh, rectangular marquee tool. Uh, control A, Control C, that just selects all, and then copies that new and then go from here. So it'll automatically go to the exact same resolution and scale that it's on. So 704 pixels by uh, 1024 pixels at a resolution of 96 pixels per inch. Make sure that's, and really you can, again, scale it up if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter, uh, but we're just gonna follow exactly what they have here. So just remove that layer. And then usually you'll label these. You don't have to, it's not, it requires if it's not gonna change the program. It's always a best practice though to add that. So let's see, we're gonna go, and the, the, the name doesn't actually matter uh, whatsoever. It, it's just something to help you um, as the person. And then we're gonna go over here, again, Control A, Control C, copy. And then I have a, a dedicated key input to change things to smart objects. If you don't have one, mine's Control F5, for example, you're gonna right click on your layer, convert to smart object. Now the smart object, turns your scaling uh, into, I think it's bilinear, but I'm not positive. Uh, but basically you won't lose quality uh, of high res pictures at all. You won't lose quality of low res pictures. If they're low res, it'll just keep the same quality, but it won't make them worse whatsoever. But that just means that you can basically turn your, um, your image into a vector file. Um, that just makes it so it's easier for the system to scale it and you're not like trying to physically uh, edit pixels, this makes it so you're just editing kind of a virtual item. And I know we're working with computers. If you guys know Photoshop, you guys will know what I'm talking about, but otherwise, um, just trust me on this process, you'll wanna turn basically everything into a smart object unless you need to directly edit it, say turning up saturation, um, removing some pixels from images if you don't want the information there, etc. instead of using masks. Um, but one of my practices is that I always just turn it into a smart object. You can also use this later. If you turn something into a smart object, say this Yu-Gi-Oh card art ripped directly from Master Duel, you can then put in a different card art later and uh, change the picture without actually having to physically move everything around. It's one of the better ways to do it, so I can actually show you guys right from here. So say MST, again, I'm gonna right click Photoshop, uh, just as an example why you would do this. And this, again, is gonna make it easier. So card art, and then you're gonna double click. I always double click, you can also like right click and open. Literally just paste it right there, control S, changes it right there. Obviously we're not making MST, we're making max C, so we're gonna delete that and go back. So this is the base of the card, and we're gonna start with the title of the card, title up here, and attribute, if there's anything here. So every single card has an attribute, whether it be a monster, spell, or trap. Obviously monsters have the, the, the seven different types that are in the TCG, you know, earth, wind, fire, water, uh, light, dark. Um, and divine, and then spells and traps just have spells and traps. So we're gonna start with the actual card name. We're gonna wanna put that on a layer above the card frame because we want that to be above. I will always put the card art behind the card frame, again, because we can always hide that just to check. Um, and if there's any coloration issues ever, if you wanna try and make it on the background, um, it's easier to do it this way, and then eventually we can put that under a folder. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna press T for our text tool. You can really do this in any way. And next step of the process. So from here, I've used the YGO card NA text. If you wanna make a Japanese card, you can use the YGO card JP regular. It'll look different. 
Um, this is the font that they use for Japanese cards. The North American uh, one is going to be the standard for the English uh, releases of Master Duel. So from here, we're gonna approximate it. I actually added the actual version. I cropped everything just to make it look a little bit better. Um, the color is gonna be washed out compared to the version we're making. I'm also gonna change this to card text and then sample card doesn't really matter again. But this is what it'll look like. So from right here, this is what we have. We're gonna just play with the font sizes and the fonts themselves. So currently we're at 42. I believe it's right at the correct height. Now they have it squished a little bit. You can change these settings in just a moment. So from here we're just trying to get approximation, so. And they actually use the uh, capital letters for everything and then just change the font sizes from there. So, uh, that's about right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, these are gonna be a little bit smaller. So let's see, 35, we're gonna change this to 45. We're gonna change the C to 45 as well. So 35 and 45. So 35 will be for small letters. So not beginning of each letter and then 35 will be for, uh, excuse me, 35 will be for small letters, 45 will be for the capital letters at the beginning. So I'm gonna change this actually to about 40, just to mimic this as much as possible. Yeah, that looks about right. Yep, and from here you can either change this to a smart object, I don't necessarily recommend doing that, but we can, highlight the entire thing, and then go over here, and then we're gonna go to advance, and then you can actually change how large the, the type is from this. Um, so the program, the game itself, does this automatically. There's a script that they use for it. In Photoshop, you have to do it manually using this. So I'm doing it at 125%, which pretty close to it. I mean, honestly, could play with it just a little bit more make it to say 120 percent that's really close so and then you just really just move it around i prefer to make it look more like an actual yugioh card where the everything tends to be a little more centered on yugioh cards than using master duel you can see master duel um, it's a ratio between the corners uh, between the top and the the very top and the very leftmost just like a regular typewriter um, or any kind of word processing program. That's how the game interprets it. Um, but I prefer to have a little more uh, Yu-Gi-Oh card look-alike from here. So that is what the title is going to be. If you want to use the actual text that they use for Yu-Gi-Oh cards, it's a font called Matrix. I will provide a an old forum post in the description below with all the resources you'll need for each time. It's a little more complicated because there are a lot of fonts. Um, and font sizes that go into actual Yu-Gi-Oh cards. For here, Master Duel just dumbs it down and uses just three main fonts. Again, Yu-Gi-Oh card, uh, NA, um, Rodan Pro, and the Attack Defense. So you can see the Attack Defense. Um, it's a variant, actually, of the YGO card NA print. It, it, these are all custom fonts, basically. Um, so that's gonna take care of that. And then we're gonna actually go down to the text now and take a look at that. And so you guys can see that I actually put this in here. So you're going to want to scroll down approximately where this title is. You guys can see it by comparing it between the actual card on Master Duel and what we have here. I just made a little box like right around here. Let me see if I can show you guys. So I changed the name. So card name. So that's Maxi. And then Insect Effect. Um, we'll change that to Monster. Down here, again, Waiju card NA, 22 and a half. Um, normally we don't use half point fonts, it's a little bit messy once you get there, but from here, uh, we're just gonna do 22 and a half, and you can make it as large as you want. Again, this is pretty close, and I lined it up by changing the opacity on this, uh, this sample card, and just kind of lining up as best as I could. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go down here. I'm just gonna click Alt and Shift to basically copy this and then put card text in here. I like to organize it by where you see from the top to the bottom of the card minus the frame. So from here, I'm gonna actually pull up 
Let's see. I'm gonna pull this up in a different, in a web browser and get the official card text from the Yu-Gi-Oh! database. Just so we have that here. And of course we know it's an insect level two. So we're gonna expand this around here. We're gonna leave some room for the attack and defense. Now my, everything on here is incorrect for mine. I've been playing around with it for different projects and whatnot. Um, so you will, you may have to change this. We'll have to change this on our end too. And then again, we're just gonna line it up and we can see that it's way different um, compared to normally. So Rodan, I wanna say Rodan is used, let's see. This might be the regular text. I can, oh, this is the, Rodan is the um, like menu text that we see in the game. Um, so we're not actually gonna use that for the cards. So I'm gonna change this to 22. And again, you may have to, depending on your version, um, you may have to play with this a little bit, but generally speaking, this will be approximately the same. You can change um, everything. You can change the tracking, kerning, any scales, anything like that from here. So tracking, if you guys don't know, Tracking is the space between all letters. Um, kerning is gonna be the difference between all uh, individual letters, and it's just graphic design graphic design terms. You guys don't really need to know that though uh, for this because we are gonna, I'm gonna adjust the font a little bit more, the font size. We might wanna make sure that, that this doesn't happen at all. There's a setting you can do, but usually I will do it manually with video cards just as samples. Um, just to make it look a little bit cleaner, just like the actual cards. So from here, we're gonna go, that's pretty close actually. So again, I try and estimate it. So from here, your text will only cover inside this box. So this is pretty close. I'm satisfied with this. So we're gonna continue again using the uh, YGO card and A text. And from here, we're gonna add another layer and we're gonna make a little little tiny rectangle. I'm gonna use this as a guide. Now this is not technically the best way to do it, um, but it is the easiest way to do it, and it's literally just gonna be a rectangle. From here, it'll look a little bit more bold than you may want it to, uh, but it still is pretty much the same. Honestly, we could probably make this just a tiny bit smaller. We all have its size and uh, We'll use just that. So I'm going to go up on here and down up here. Make that as thin as possible, just like the cards. And then from there, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to change the color in here. Mine's in a dark gray. I'm going to change it to register, which is just a fancy term for black. Um, that's zero, zero, of course. So true black from there. We're going to do that. And then we're going to work on the attack and defense. The next thing I will put, put the rectangle here. Okay. Defense. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because we have a lot more spaced out letters, the tracking and, and kerning for each uh, each word and all the numbers are going to be a lot different. Let's go ahead and see how well I can do this in one take. Let's use. And, yep, so not every single, the spaces aren't actually, they will end up just these error squares or rectangles. Um, that is how it's supposed to happen. It is not supposed to register those, really, because you're only using numbers. Um, and yeah, so 500. And how you adjust it from here without using any spaces, this is what we're going to use the tracking. You can also use the alt key, press and hold alt, and then use your arrow keys and your keyboard to change everything from here. So you're gonna have to do that with every single thing from here. And it's a pain. Again, the system automatically does it normally, uh, but because we are not a computer, uh, we won't be able to do that. So not, not 5,000. So we're gonna manually change those. And it's easy once you actually get the hang of it. Um, to change everything around, we're gonna go over to advanced. And we're gonna turn this on, yeah, so we can see our attack and defense is very different. I'm gonna try and make this look a little bit cleaner. 
we'll go from there. So currently I'm at 32. Again, this is a very strange font. Um, so it doesn't follow the rules of normal fonts where normally you won't have everything staking up between this boundary box. Um, this font specifically is made to just stick to the card to as close to the board as possible. And that's just a design choice by the game creators. Oh, it's 200 defense, my bad. Um, easy, once you guys start making your own cards though, um, you can just change everything uh, around immediately. So that's pretty good actually. Um, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. You can use your arrow keys to move these over manually. Um, I'm also gonna change the kerning here. So again, space between letters. This is where this comes in. So you want them to be as close as possible. Um, if you guys notice thumbnails and everything, text, I make sure that everything is as neat as possible because I absolutely hate the way um, most people make their thumbnails simply because they are quite messy with kerning and tracking. From here, I might actually increase this a little bit more. That's probably good, honestly. Again, I'll make it just a little bit closer to the edge and then move it over. So that looks really good from here. Now what we're gonna do next is get the attribute from the game and then the stars, the levels specifically. So these are gonna be different than the than the actual ones that they use with Yu-Gi-Oh. So the attribute uses a scalable vector file in the actual cards, um, meaning it's a it's a vector. So it can be scaled infinitely and it doesn't pixelate whatsoever because they are mathematical shapes and text and the whatever you know, whatever character is used for each attribute, um, whether it be monster, spell, or trap. We're gonna go ahead and pull those up right now from the game. I can help you guys locate that. So from here, we're actually gonna go into, from the full assets folder that I have, we're gonna go into Sprite. We're gonna scroll down. It might take a little bit of searching. Um, first, we're gonna locate the level and then we're gonna locate the attribute. So attributes are stored all in here. Level, this isn't the exact thing that they use. This is for the deck edit, but we can also use this. So we're gonna open it in Photoshop. We're gonna import this. So again, Control-A, Control-V, Control-C, and then Control-V. And then we're gonna turn this into a smart object. So and then we're gonna name it level. I'm gonna throw it up uh, right here and then Approximate it. Should be like right ish here. Let me get a little bit closer. Um, and it should already be scaled properly compared to our card frame because, again, this is what the, the game is going to use. I don't know if it's the exact same asset or if there's another, uh, another place for it to be stored, but yeah, so it looks good. And then we're going to place this level. So I'm going to name that actually level one because I can always use this and then we can make a level two, level three, level four, and they're gonna be stored exactly right next to each other. You can see right here. You might even wanna give it just a tiny, tiny bit of space. Um, just like that, yeah. So I think that looks good from there. That looks perfect. And then if you wanted to, so I'm gonna name it level two. So, and then if you want to add it, you can literally just copy these and go from there. And then you can hide each of these. So I'm, I'll, I'll show you guys actually, which makes a little bit more sense. So we're gonna name this level three for your level three monsters and this for level four. So if you wanted to make a, a level three monster, say we have a level four monster right here. If you want to make it level three, all you do is just hide this, boom, you already have it ready. Once we have these copied up to level 12, we can actually make this a folder. I'm gonna do this right now. So you're gonna, I, I always use the shift, or excuse me, control click. You can always use shift click as well, just to select all of them at once. Select this into your folder and then type in say levels or a level whatever you guys want, and then you can make this uh, its own setting every single time, and then you can move them all at once. You're never gonna move them though, but for Maxi, we are just going to use two stars. Alrighty, we're gonna go back into our folder, and then it's gonna be like right down here. You guys can also see the rarities here. So this is what they use for, I guess the in-game, the, I think the, when you open up a card, and then these are used for when you're actually viewing a card, it'll show the ultra, um, super and common and rares. Let's see, right here. Then you guys can also see all the counters. So this is like a road nut counter. This one is a, I wanna say a counter counter. That's something or another. Alien counter, they have all of them here. And these are the official ones they use. But from right here, we're gonna select the earth, open. And then you guys can see, again, it's pixelated because it's supposed to. Uh, we, we're not gonna worry about uh, using the actual one quite yet because Master Duel again uses a different one. This is, should, again, should also be scaled properly. I'm gonna type in. 
earth. You guys can also put this in an attribute folder, um, just like this. And then, let's see what it looks like from here. So there's actually text. If you want to include the text, you can. Um, I don't think I will. Actually, you know what? I will show you guys for what this looks like. Um, let me throw this right, I'm kind of scale this as close as we can. And this will take, again, some trial and error. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard just because we don't have the card in a different window. Normally I would put this in a different window and then go from there. And the reason why I'm actually just going to... I'm going to make this uh, a little bit easier just to make a bunch of different cards. Uh, I will show you guys in one second. So we're going to line this up. Oh, it's pretty close. It's close enough and I'm satisfied with it. So that's going to be Earth. What I'm going to do is show you guys a little trick with this. So we're going to name this... Uh, we're gonna name it attribute and from here earth and then we're gonna right click and click new object new smart object via copy so that actually changes it so if you were to just copy this smart object it would anywhere to edit the the contents of one or the other it would change both we want to make this an entirely new copy so we're gonna change this to water go in here we haven't changed the actual size whatsoever within here so we're gonna right click within our assets, go water, copy, close it out immediately, paste, delete the earth, save, boom. Already scaled perfectly, we're all good, we don't need to worry about it whatsoever. You can do that for every single card attribute type. Uh, it's the exact same process, so once you get one of them done, you get all of them done basically, and then it's just a matter of copy and pasting from the, um, from the official source. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and copy or create a new layer, go up here. I will have to double check which font is used for this. I'm just gonna set it to five, and it should be, and it's quite messy. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set that from here, and then set it to Earth. Again, I'm gonna edit this in just one second, and then we'll go ahead and, and go from there. So Earth uh, looks like it is, let's see. No, it looks like it's using Roden Pro for this, so we're gonna highlight that. Type in Rodan. Again, that's what it initially looks like. It may actually be different from here. Oops. Yeah. And then we're going to change this to center. Yeah, so it's going to be the Rodan NTLG Pro. Looks like that's what they're using for this. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and increase the boundary box size a little bit and change it to 11 and honestly if I were making a custom card I'd be fine with with doing just doing it this way um, the actual Yuga card is gonna be using again a little bit different but basically that is what that's all you really need if you want to put some text down here because they're like card numbers usually uh, master Duel does not have them on here um, but the actual cards will um, there are gonna be numbers and and so the card ID will be down here, and then the copyright notice and down here, and then the Eye of, um, Eye of Horse, I think it is. It'll be down here, but basically that's all you need to know for these, you know, to make these custom cards. If you just want to make Master Duel looking cards, everything's available in here. All the attributes, again, attributes, uh, exceeds, ranks, they're all in here. Every single asset is in here. You can make your own links using everything. Links are going to be a little bit more complicated because they use a lot of different properties. They use a lot of different, um, these link five, link six, uh, one, two, three, the, all the arrows as well. And then they don't have their own stars. They don't have anything like that, but we do have the ranks here. Um, they're going to be a little bit different, but if you guys want to, you guys can always experiment with it. This is just going to be for an effect monster. I can always make more tutorials later on how to make the best um, links and synchros and exceeds, all of that. Um, process is very similar for exceeds and, and synchros. It's just going to make them look a little bit different. We have to set up things a little bit differently, but theoretically you can make um, a custom card all within the same file and then just really hide and, and, and you know, unhide the different kind of properties here. Let me know what you guys think about this. Really hope this tutorial helped you guys making custom cards using the Master Dual Asset, and thank you as always for watching.